Hey Tommy, sometimes when you come to another show, unexpected vehicles show up from a major auto manufacturers, and we are at where, Tommy? We are at the Japan Mobility Show 2023, and Toyota has kind of dropped a bombshell on us. Yeah, all of a sudden we're walking around, and guess what? There is this very interesting pickup truck <laughs> that popped up. Of course, it's electric, and how do we know that? How do we know that, Tommy? Because it's called the Toyota EPU which stands for electric pickup truck. Now here's the thing, Dad, we've seen a lot of concepts at this show, stuff like this electric Land Cruiser, where you've got unrealistic mirrors and cardboard brakes, and it's clearly not gonna make it into production as it sits. But this EPU, Dad, is looking more production ready than just about anything here. It's got real mirrors, it's got a real interior, and this could be Toyota's answer to vehicles like the Ford Maverick. This is a small, compact unibody truck. So here's the funny story, guys. So we came up here, we didn't know anything about this, and I happened to see a designer who's taking a picture of himself with the truck, and I said, hey, did you do this? And he said, yeah, I did the interior. And I said, can you tell me about it? And he said, no, go to the press release. And the press release tells you absolutely nothing about it except that it's electric. Uh, we do know that it was designed at Calti, which is you know the California-based design studio. And if you look at it, Tommy, uh, I would say it looks very much like the Rivian got together with the Santa Cruz and this was what they had. Yeah, Dad, I, there's a lot of it I really like. I love the open country tires. I think the front is pretty handsome. I love that they're not trying to fake a grill on a fully battery electric vehicle. And then in the back, I really like this cut line here on the rear doors and the contrasting black roof against the body shell. And then when you get to the bed, it's probably about a four foot bed, composite bed design as well with the tie down. So there's a lot I like. There's some things I don't like. I think that kind of this way that the tailgate tapers is a little bit odd. Well, look at, look at the tailgate first of all. Look, there's a, like a cut line there. Like it may open up in two different directions or perhaps we, we this is a concept so we can't start playing around with it but it might be like a you know like a gm multi-pro bed that it opens up and then creates a step as well yeah it very well could be dad there might be some cool hinging mechanisms yeah right here right this is where it looks like it hinges yeah very interesting good now, spot there now what's interesting here to tommy is of course toyota has kind of been late to the game with electrification. They have been promoting solid state batteries forever. And in the EV world, they are a much hated company because, well, they stuck to hybrids well beyond probably where, you know, uh, most people thought they should have gone EVs. And all of a sudden here in Japan, they up unveiled just a slew of electric vehicles, a sports car, you know, uh, well, whatever that is. It's a Land Cruiser. Or whatever this is. I, I, yeah, I don't know what this is. <laughs> I don't know, it's electric. <laughs> Some quad motor thing, I think. Yeah. Yeah, but, but the one that's certainly the most surprising is this, and that's the electric pickup truck. You want to kind of go and show them the inside? We can't open it up. Yeah. Uh, but we can kind of give them a peek inside. But you can see it's looking pretty finished, actually. So you got these nice-looking, comfortable-looking bucket seats. Very much Rivian-like. Very Rivian, yeah. Door panel, pretty minimalist. You can see the lock, unlock button there. It does have the stupid yoke. I hope that doesn't make it into production. Yeah, there's production. a lot of yokes here in uh, Tokyo. I don't know what is up with... Uh, this Tesla-like uh, fascination with an airplane control device, but somehow this has become a thing now. It could have the variable assistance and, and rack that the uh, Lexus RZ has. You can see there you have your drive selector, so you've got drive, reverse, park, and M. And then over here you've got your digital cluster. And now then the back seat room does look pretty tight, but it does appear to have a completely flat floor. Now what's really surprising, of course, is that for the longest time all Toyota had was the BZ4X, right? Which was a joint vehicle with uh, Subaru. Uh, but now, apparently, Toyota has gone into the deep end with electrification. Uh, so what do you think size-wise? Where does this fall? You think it's like a Rivian? You think it's like a mid-size truck? I mean, would, would it slide underneath the Tacoma? So look, we've heard rumors of the Toyota Stout, yeah. which is supposed to be their new compact truck. I'm kind of wondering if this is going to be the design direction of the Stout. It kind of feels Maverick-sized, Santa Cruz-sized. Maybe more like Tacoma, maybe more mid-sized. Um, but it, it could be bigger. What do you think of these door handles? They're kind of inside, but yet you can reach in and you know pull on them. I think they're cool, and I really like this cut line that makes this very 
tight character line down the side door. And then of course you got the blacked out roof and you got the nice fender flare. It looks like the charge port is here on what we would be considered the driver's side. I don't know, but yeah, I think that's where it would be. You yeah. know what's really interesting, Dad, is everything here yeah. is right-hand drive because we're in Japan, except for this truck, which is left-hand drive, which I think is pretty telling that perhaps it is US bound, certainly US designed. I would say there's a frunk. Looks like there is a front yeah. good spot. I don't think it's a full cut like you find in an F-150 Lightning or Rivian. Perhaps just the lid opens up, which would lead to a pretty tall liftover height. And judging by the tires on this thing, Dad, I'm thinking maybe we got a dual motor all-wheel drive setup yeah, in what there. what are we rolling on here? Open countries. Yeah, these look like 20-inch wheels. It's a snow-rated tire. Yeah. Uh, I can't see the size on 20-inch wheels, 245-60R20s. Yeah, and, it, and says, it says BEV, obviously, so it is Good chance, electric. Dad, good chance that this is a dual motor setup with the motor in the front and the motor in the back. Look, if this was designed in America, it's got to be all-wheel drive, right? Yeah, well, you'd think. Look, yeah. you got cup holders there. Looks like you got maybe a wireless charger which looks good. I mean, I love the inside. I love the minimalist feel. I just really don't like the yoke. If they could get rid of the yoke, I'd be a happy that, man. What do you think of that little control thing? That's the shifter. Yeah, I know. It's kind of funny just floating there next to the uh, kind of screen, funny. huh? But look at I mean, um, the, the compact space is heating up. I'm thinking now that I look at it, it's probably bigger than a compact. I think it's Rivian size, dude. That's, I mean, well, that's, oh, yeah. Okay, let, let's see, let's see. Four foot bed would be kind of one, two, three, Four, yeah, it might be four or four and a half feet long. Yeah, it's kind of like a Rivian. Pretty yeah. narrow. It is, it is very deep. The automotive journalist yeah. just uh, made a really good point that the, that the bed is super deep, which is weird because you think that there'd be batteries under there. Well, look, you also see the cut line in the bed. I wonder if they have the spare in that, like a trunk, kind of like Rivian does. Do you think it's that far de in development? Um, I, I mean, that it looks like if you got finished mirrors on a product, yeah. You're pretty close to a, a finished design, so yeah, I think it's... Uh... I, and I also think EPU is just a working title, because there's no real badge, right? So, I like your pickup truck, but will it be the EPU when it's all said and done? You know, this could be whatever, right? Yeah. But guys, it's cool to be able to see it up close and personal. A very unique opportunity that um, you know, not a lot of folks have right off the bat. And I sure it's a head scratcher, isn't it? I think it's got potential. I just don't know where, where it fits in the market. What do you think pricing wise? Is this gonna be a $40,000 truck? Is this gonna be a $70,000 truck? You know, it depends if there's solid state batteries that are there. I, I don't know. It really depends on what it's rolling on, how big the battery is, how quickly it charges. What's the range? What's the range? None of that we know. Uh, I would say to be competitive, it's gonna have to be in the Rivian and you know the Rivian long range which is what starts at what seventy three thousand dollars the basic one the two two motor uh, that's you know got over 300 miles of range the quad motor with the big battery now is over 400 miles of range and so you know the the level's pretty high where you have to be to be competitive in that world I, I don't know lightning I is, think you're way too high I think this is more like like a like a compact mid-sized truck in the fifty thousand dollar range forty thousand dollar range you think yeah, I don't think it's that premium. Well, but, let, let us know, comments below, please, if this is something that you would actually buy if Toyota built it. You know, like I said, for a long time, Toyota and the rest of Japan really didn't have a lot of EVs, and then we show up, and there's you know, EVs there, EVs there, EVs everywhere. <laughs> As always, this is Roman. And Tommy, check out alttfl.com for the latest and greatest in new car and truck reviews. And the EPU.